Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 2.00, and in this lesson, we're really just going to walk through how to get Bitwig Studio, how to install it to your computer, and walk through the first couple of screens that pop up on installation and how you can still access some of those menus after you've already installed. So I've gone to bitwig.com. This is the splash landing homepage here. It's really easy to download Bitwig uh, from the homepage. If you wanna just test out the demo, I would say now is a pretty good time to do that. You can just go over here, click demo. You have access to the demo for 30 days and saving and exporting is disabled. But apart from that, it's still totally functional. And so you can get your hands as dirty as you want in those first 30 days. Uh, to buy Bitwig right now, you only have a couple of options. Uh, you can go through the shop here. There's also a buy local, but here in the United States, the only place it looks like you can buy it is from Nectar Tech. So let's just go ahead and buy it through the actual website. If we go in here, we can go to our purchase page and it brings us over here to one of these online uh, commerce sites. And to then download and purchase a license, you'll click buy now. Gives you a couple of additional options, both of which I think are kind of con jobs. Uh, there's this download 24 month protection, which I have no idea what that is. So I'm gonna take it off. And then I also have, let's see, backup media. Eh, don't want that either. That would send you a, a physical copy as well, which, you know, if you need that, you might want to grab it. But I think if you have a problem downloading the software, they should help you out and shouldn't like go out of their way to make life incredibly difficult for you. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. I'll type in all of my information. I'll make my payment. And then when we come back, we'll go through the steps to download and install all of this. Okay, so once you've purchased Bitwig Studio, you go through like a series of menus like you would expect, and then all you really have to do is follow the instructions. So step one is gonna indicate that you need to click this particular link and it's going to send you to the bitwig.com um, account register page. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll type in my information here and then we'll come back and go through uh, the next step. All right, so once you've made an account, you're going to be sent to this screen here, which is just a simple screen saying that you need to go to your email, click one of those confirmation links, and from there, you're going to be able to fully uh, register your Bitwig Studio. So let's go ahead and do a couple more of those steps, and then I will be back when I think it's necessary to come back in. So once you've uh, successfully registered your license key, you're gonna be brought to this splash page here and you're gonna be given a download link option. Obviously choose what's correct for you in terms of if you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux. And this page is basically just going to tell you the um, fixes that they've made and the latest releases. So the latest releases come out on 4.14.2014 works for me, I'll go ahead and click save file. It's going to download it. Okay, so it's finished downloading and I've gone ahead and moved that file from our download folder out onto the desktop. From here, obviously, it's totally straightforward. Just a traditional installation like you would do on any other program for the most part, uh, just a drag and drop and then it will install. And now that's finished installing, all I have to do is open it up. There it is right there at the top. And let's go through the first time opening Bitwig Studio together. If you get that message, you can just click open. Again, I'm on the uh, Macintosh system. Here's what it looks like when it's opening. Okay, so when Bitwig finally finishes and opens up, this is basically going to be your default page. Uh, you might have gone through some other steps as well to uh, determine where your audio interface is, where your plugins are, etc. But even if you went through that and had no idea what to click on, that's okay. You can just cancel through all of that and it'll open up like this. So 
the first thing I want to do is let's make our lives a little bit easier and let's just try to get rid of a lot of the other panels right now so we can really understand what's going on. First thing I'm going to do is click this show inspector panel and the fact that it's lit up as orange means that it's active right now. So if I click that it should go away. So I'm adding a little bit of screen real estate over here. I also don't want this device view uh, up. So I can click this and I can bring it down, get rid of the device panel. I also have this S1 effect. If I don't want that, I can click it off. Really, it's very easy to show and hide different things inside of Bitwig. Anything that's lit up orange like this is going to indicate that you can see it or that's what's active. By clicking it, it's going to make a change. So in this case, it's going to make my track smaller. I don't really care about that. Uh, right now, I feel pretty good, lots of space, and I'm feeling very comfortable. Let's look at some of the things we can do, though, right when we open it up. And right here, I can tell that this is open, and this is our browser panel. If I want to get, get rid of that, I can just click, or I can also just click the B button. Very easy to do. So let's open it up, because this is what it brought up by default. And to get over to the browser configuration, you're going to click on this little wheel here, this gear sign, and it will bring you to the browser configuration page. So let's go ahead here and see what packages Bitwig comes with, Bitwig native content. So right now I don't have anything installed. And what I would recommend is that you go through here and at least install all the stuff that comes with Bitwig. So all of these ones that are in red. We're going to talk about these partner collections a little bit later. And we're going to at least download a couple of those when we're making some music. But for now, let's just go ahead and grab the essential collection right here. So I'll click install to that. And it will go through and install the essential collection inside of my program. So I'll wait for this to finish and then I will come back. Okay, so the Essential Collection has finished installing. I know that for a couple of reasons. Number one, you'll see a orange bar down here at the bottom and that's indicating the status of the download. And number two, I now have the option to uninstall the Essential Collection, meaning that it must have installed. So I can go ahead and click hide here. And let's look at the next one. So this one's called Sound Content Location. And as you can read, it says this is a location for your own and third party sound content. So I don't know, maybe let's add a folder. I've put a folder on the desktop that just has a few loops in it. And let's see how easy this is. I'll go to my desktop here and I'm going to select sounds and I can see I have a few sounds in there and I'll click open. And again, we can watch the bottom here. It's indexing, it's finding those sounds, and it's going to be adding them into my library, which I can then access. And you can see that's in there just like that. Same thing with music locations. You can click add location. You can go to like your iTunes folder, or if you have a folder full of tracks that you want for a DJ set, really easy. You can organize everything out on your desktop and then bring it in to Bitwig so that you can easily find whatever you're looking for. And last is plugin locations. And we looked at this in an earlier video. By default, it's going to go where it thinks your plugins are located and it has picked the right folder for me. But if we just wanted like one or two plugins in their own separate folder, we could do that as well. So we could put a plugin into a folder inside of our documents called like essential plugins that just has the ones that we want to use. And then Bitwig will go ahead and make that available for you. So let's work our way backwards across this browser configuration. If we go to files, you're going to see a ton of stuff. You can pretty much access any file from your computer here just follow these um, targets. So you could go to computer and then obviously open up from there into all of your extensions. But the nice thing is that there is a current project folder. This is the one you're probably gonna use more than anything else. And if we were to record something in or have some audio or information, it would show up in here. And I already showed you guys that before as well. We can move over now to our clips, okay? And here's a place where you can add stuff in like I showed you before. Um, if we go back here, this is going to give us some of those file locations. You can also just as easily go to sound content location, right click, add sound content location. And if I wanted to add my sounds folder again, I could do that really, really easily. It's already been installed there, whoop-de-doo, not surprised. 
Um, so just like that, very easy, we can find stuff. It also includes some of our packages here. Anytime you click, you can access anything that's inside of that particular folder. So this says 707 back to 90s beat A01. Why don't we just like drag this in here? See what it sounds like. Okay, not that exciting, just a simple drum beat. If I double click, I can see what's going on on all these things. Don't worry about all this for now. We'll be covering it more in more depth a little later. Here's our music folder. And again, you can add stuff into there like I showed you. Here are multi samples. So if I pull one of these in, you're gonna see. Uh, this is a multi sample player right here. And the reason it's multi sample is because they have multiple samples loaded in on different keys across the keyboard. And obviously we'll be getting into that as we move forward in the course. Here is where our samples are and our downloaded packages. So this is including the stuff that was involved in that essential package that we downloaded. Again, all we have to do is click, we can open this up, go deeper if we want, and all of that is down here in this second browser panel. We'll be going through this in more depth later also. And last but not least, here's our devices panel. So these are our built-in devices, and then we would have any VST plugins that we want to access down below. Last thing I want to show you is that, uh, well, actually a couple of things. First is that if you ever want to open the package manager for any time, you don't just have to go here and click open package manager. You can do it from file and you can download anything you want. Again, here, um, I'll probably end up downloading everything at a certain point uh, so that we have access to all of these. And I would encourage you guys to do the same thing. Also, a very helpful tool is if you want access to the manual, you'll have to go through help and then you can select user guide right here uh, and you'll get the English one. And one thing I would recommend you do just to make your life a little bit easier, it's actually bundled pretty deep within the program. So you can, if you want, you could select file and you could move this out to the desktop if you wanted to do that. Um, and that will make your life a little bit easier. I'll show you actually how to access this in the next video if you wanna pull it somewhere else. But for right now, to access the manual, you'll go to help and select user guide. So that's the basics of going through and downloading and installing Bitwig Studio to your computer. In the next video, I'll talk about the user guide a little bit and then um, we'll go from there.